Right, so we're going to have in here your snack. So you have this uh, buckwheat cup. Uh, then you also have some mackerel and roll. Uh, here we have these uh, soft nori tacos, some uh, aged ribeye and anchovies in there. So here we have the second part of the snacks for you. Okay, so this is a cod head croquetta with burnt chive mayonnaise and a mushroom and truffle donut filled with Taleggio cheese. So we start here for you with uh, artic char, so raw artic char, wrapped in a rose with a yellow courgette, fennel fronds, and I'm going to pour a dressing of smoked fennel and tukapi. So we recommend that you break the rose so it slightly marinates the fish a little bit. And while there, you have a squidding pillow filled with a smoked roe mousse. to have in here uh, this is a Scottish mussel custard um, it also been cooked with uh, sake kuzu so sake kuzu is the rice after uh, cooking the making the sake uh, for me there's a lot of flavors in that so we have also with uh, uh, muli and uh, some trout roll and uh, some elderflower in there as well the mussel sauce in here. To go with this custard, we have these uh, uh, seaweed uh, crackers in there, a bit of yield to that as well. So this is called the chicken, uh, so on the bottom is an onion puree, you have a confit, it goes with some grated truffle and some pickled onions, and then to go with it, inside this eggshell here is a chicken liver parfait, and then on top of that is an onion caramel, so the idea is you get your little spoon, you break through the caramel and mix it all together with the parfait, uh, you have a small mushroom brioche there to go with the parfait, there's a puffed chicken foot there, and then on the skewer, you have a crispy chicken wing and a sauteed chicken pie. And I'm just finishing it now with a chicken sauce. Okay, so we're opening now our bread sauce. So we have a wholemeal sourdough bread, roasted bone marrow, finished with a sage powder, then a selection of butters. So these two here are our own culture butter that we are doing in the house. The plain one is finished with sea salt, the middle is pink and peppercorn, and the green and olive oil butter. So we've just texturized olive oil. So for your next course, as you may have read, you will be having moqueca. So first of all, we just present to you how you traditionally find this dish in Brazil. So as you can see, it's a stylish stew, fish stew. There's also shellfish involved, vegetables and spices. Now there's one main ingredient here which is giving that colour there to the sauce. This is called dente oil. 
So this is the oil which has been extracted from the fruits of the palm tree. So they're red berries and they give this deep red oil. Also add in the flavour as well, which you're going to taste shortly. So I'll take this one away, then we plate our own version for you. A lot easier to eat, less messy, but still based around the traditional flavour. Okay? Okay, so this is the lemon kicker. It's a little bit different to the one you've just seen. So obviously this is the terra version. Look what we have here is we have a wild halibut, chorito kombu, and a kunomi meat. We serve it with some uh, palm palm and farofa. So farofa meat is um, toasted, like toasted flour, tries with toasted flour. So what we do here is we toast cassava flour from the manual. Some of Brazil nuts, uh, garlic, and also uh, some um, hen of the wood mushroom. I'm going to come now with your sauce. So here we have the uh, manteca sauce. So everything you just saw in the copper pot goes into it in this sauce. And just here in the centre you have your chilies. These are called kumari chilies. So what we do recommend in, in Bahia, they like this dish a little bit spicy. What we say is you take one chili, you drop it into your sauce, let the flavour infuse, and if you like the flavour, you can have as many chilies you like. I find that the, the red ones are like the least hot, so it's a bit sweeter, then the green and the yellow ones are a bit of punch, a little bit spicy. Please. This is your duck ravioli dish. Um, basically what we've tried to do with this is incorporate as much of the duck as possible. So inside the pasta itself, you've got a uh, comfy duck leg ragu. Underneath, you've got a crumb that we've made using the skin of the duck and a sauce that we've made using the bones and the offal of the duck. On the side here, you've got a duck breast, which we've smoked, cured, and then hung for a week. Um, it sort of imitates the strami. Uh, goes goes really nice in the dish. Um, also underneath the pasta, you have a watercress and rocket puree. And we're just finishing the dish off with a whey sauce. The whey in this sauce is um, the byproduct of the butter making process. So the butter that you would have had earlier with your bread course, this is the, the whey that's left over from that. So we'll drain that back to the sauce. This is our last savory. Uh, we have for this lamb sirloin, a uh, cassava terrine, artichoke chewy with miso and some courgette. And on the side we have a salad with uh, cabalonero, rainbow chard, sea aster. We have the sweet bread on top of the salad, uh, pickled stems from the chard, and bikino peppers. And we finish the dish with a lamb sauce, <laughs> some garlic, capers, parsley, and chef.
this course is uh, called Romeo and Juliet, um, and it's a goat cheese flan with guava gel. Um, in Brazil, they believe that this flavour combination is the perfect match, hence why they've called it Romeo and Juliet, um, and it is served with a fennel cracker. Enjoy. I'm here with our take on a classic rum baba. So we put some soak into the bars and a bit of a cachaça rum syrup. And then we also have in here a little bit of a pistachio ice cream on top of it. And together with this, we also have a bit of a caviar. So this is an N25 caviar. It's quite like a high level of caviar basically. It might sound a little strange to have a caviar in dessert, but it works incredibly well all together. So N25 basically stands for the location it is from, which is in Germany. And also is a hybrid with Kaluga. Together with this, you can have a bit of the cachaça rum syrup. Split out a bit of love show. Yeah. We come here with our final course today. It's a bit of a sheep yogurt ice cream. Hence why we have some sheep on top of it. Together with this, we have a bit of a raspberry consomme and also a bit of raspberries as well. And then I'm going to finish off with a bit of a balsamic, which is actually 40 years old. So it has like naturally reduces the down it's like really intense and powerful on flavors. Hence by giving a few small drops. Kind of like overtake everything if you go a bit too far. Okay, a few small bites to finish off with. So we're having here a bit of a cone with a bit of a side berry sorbet instead of it. I recommend it to start with this one. Here we're having a bit of a sweet corn tartlet, so take a bit of a sweet corn curd. And to finish up, we're having a bit of a, you can say a liqueur candy as we call it. So it's basically like a gin that's infused with a bit of a bergamot. So it's still like liquid inside of it though, so I recommend you quite gently pick it up and eat it in one bite. But if you try to squeeze the poke even slightly, it literally just explode all over the plate. Yeah, hope you enjoy everything today.